Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. How's your day going? Hope you've had a wonderful time. Here in Portland, it is springtime. Everything's blooming. Magnolia, cherries, plums, daffodils, Daphne. It's a fragrant paradise. And it's just so dang beautiful. The sky is blue. And you know, in Portland, it's oftentimes gray this time of year and kind of wet. But right now, it's beautiful, it's sunny. Wouldn't say it's hot, but it's warm. We've been in the upper 50s. It's going to be just grand for the students coming to class next week. Yes, we do have class next week. We've not canceled, don't plan to cancel, although we are following all of the plans from Multnomah County Health and CDC. But we're fortunate in that we have a standalone classroom and a very small class sizes, so you don't have the crowds to deal with. But today, we're online with you doing flowers to wear with teacher Michelle. So it's going to be a grand day. A little bit of housekeeping reminder if you're watching me. Oh my gosh, it's kind of weird to see yourself and a delay time. Oh my gosh, okay. If you're watching yourself or if you're watching me, turn the camera sideways and you'll get a bigger picture. If the comments are in the way, give it a swipe. It'll put it in silent mode. If you want to see the comments, swipe back. You can also watch it vertically and the comments will stay on the bottom, so that can all help. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can be watching us any way you want, even on your large screen TV. Connect it. If you're on your computer, go full screen. It's all about you. You get to watch in whatever way is best for you. Now as we work today, some of you I know are just listening because maybe you're driving or you're at work and you don't want your boss to know you're watching. Keep your phone down and then we'll just say, make sure you take a look at this. Isn't this beautiful? And you can flip it over and take a look real quick and then set it back down. We'll try to work with you. It's your turn. Get your tulip in there. Announce where you're from. And I'd love to hear if there are any first timers. So if you're a first timer, go ahead and let us know so that we can welcome you. If you've got friends that should be with us to learn more about flowers to wear, tag them, share this out. Because you can see, we have so many grand things to work with today. Crespedia, ranunculus, spray roses, miniature cymbidiums, brunia, mini gerberas, rice flower. Some new surprises that I'm not going to tell you about. I'll let Michelle talk about those. But we have an hour of fun scheduled. While you're getting announced, make sure you're in there. We've got Susie online with us in Caledonia. They'll be greeting you as soon as you check in. They'll check back in with you as well. In the studio, we have Carolyn and Marisa watching for you to make sure to find out all your questions. And that's where you come in. Get yourself announced. Put in your tulip. Ask your questions and join the Tulip Tribe collaboration. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and have Michelle come up here with us because she's got so much planned for you. I love the question. Oh, Leanne, are you going to design today? As you've given me a list that's about three hours worth of stuff. I'm like, yeah, well, right. <laughs> not I'd ask, but you know, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go along. <laughs> and my answer was no, I'm just talking and I'm going to watch and learn because this is all about Michelle. You are an amazing artist when it comes to flowers to wear. Oh, thank you. Do you have a favorite, be it wrist, ring, necklace, ear? I, I would say it used to be the doing something on the wrist, some kind of cuff design. Um, I won't say that it's overdone, but I'm, I'm really moving on to more um, traditional jewelry pieces, I guess. Okay. Moving into the necklaces, the earrings, and still doing ensembles for people. That's very popular, especially with the prom girls. They like, they like feeling put together like an adult, so. I love your sets that you say in the ensemble. I was like, oh yeah, you're right, because you do the whole set so that it's a package. Mm -hmm. So they can upsell if you want. Absolutely. And you're right, the girls like. And then they need the matching handbag to go with, which you could probably put flowers on. You could make a floral purse. Yeah, you know. That would be a very cool alternative to the little bouquets that they're carrying right now, too. Wouldn't Those are still fun? popular, but um, again, it's like, what, what can I do that sets myself apart from what everybody else is doing? You know? True. We don't all want to drive, you know, tan Prius. Pri? 
Pre- the Priets. Priets. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> So Michelle's been teaching with us for several years. She's the lead instructor here at the classroom, and she also works online. So if you're an online student, you've probably been graded and evaluated by teacher Michelle. If you've been in the classroom, you had the opportunity to work with her. And moving forward, you'll see her more in the classroom and more online. So hopefully this gives you a chance to get to put a face with the name and see her style of design, which you're going to love. So what are you going to show us first here? We, we just have everything lined up today. I know, your <laughs> list was enormous, I love it. You guys are in for a treat. Well, depend, if you have a lot of questions, I can't walk, talk, and chew gum, so it'll be design and breathe. So if I have to answer questions, I have to slow down, but you know, that's fine. Um, I wanted to start with some rings. Ooh, I love the blanks. And these are the blanks that we have available. I, Carolyn, don't these come in six? A pack, of, a pack of six? A pack of six, yes. And you can get them on the website. Um, I love them. These are my go-to because it takes literally no talent <laughs> to make a ring with these. Even, but they still look so fabulous. But they look fabulous, yes. If you, um, if you end up doing a bridal shower, uh, doing like a, a flower bar for a bridal shower. These are a great way to do flower rings. You have a little party at the beginning of the bridal shower. They make their flower rings and then they either go out for cocktails or they have their brunch or whatever it is. What a great way for a store to reach out to their clients and do a make and take. Mm -hmm. That's pretty great. Easy, my favorite, my favorite. So with this one, I want to work with um, the glue dashes, the U glue dashes, and just take one of those and pop it on here, like so. Ooh, somebody needs to cut her nails off. Oh, but. <laughs> oh, but. But I like being a girl. This is a fun part. So then I'm going to work with some of the um, Oasis bullion wire in green oh but a great bright color for spring yes absolutely you know as i was looking at some of the prom trends i guess i would say or what i i see a lot of right now with their dresses it's a lot of pastel they are getting lighter mm -hmm. you know we had gone into that really black and dark and then kind of started switching out into the metallics mm -hmm. and now going back to pastels again i i really like it uh, i think it's Okay, I'll have my old lady hat on. I think it's age appropriate. Uh, there's something about a 17 year old in all black. It doesn't feel appropriate. A little too. A little too, too mature for, for that age group. Don't ask them. Yeah, no, they're no, very mature. They'll disagree. And yeah, you, you know nothing. I know. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a given. <laughs> <laughs> but the pastel colors have been really popular. Um, bling is still popular. I'm still seeing a lot of sequins. Um, so the, the nice thing about the pastel is it gives us a lot of opportunity with flowers to actually give them some color and some, some brightness. That's right. kind of where I was headed today. Totally flower friendly. Mm -hmm. So while you're prepping that, Marisa, Carolyn, what's up? Um, okay, so Arthur on Facebook actually um, wants to know uh, what's a flower bar? Oh, well, so a flower bar is, uh, so think back to when yogurt bars were popular. Salad bars. Salad bars, yeah, if that works for you. Ice you, cream bars. Ice cream bar, yeah. <laughs> uh, now we're really dating ourselves. Um, but where you have uh, a set item, say your yogurt, you have the ring blanks, and then you have an assortment of flowers and maybe some um, silk leaves or some rhinestones or uh, pearl-headed pins that are colored, and people get to pick and choose the things that they want to assemble onto that ring. Um, you can do it with flower crowns, same concept. You can do it with um, necklaces and so forth. It just gets a little a little more involved. This is a much smaller space. It's much more manageable. If you're in a shop, you really don't need to go out and buy things. It's, it's those broken bits. I call it the flotsam and jetsam, that little bit of baby's breath that's left over or the odd little bit of leaves. So you really don't need to go out and buy bunches of things you can just kind of harvest from the shop and, and it's have just bits and have bits and it's extra income at that point because you right. might have thrown that bit out otherwise definitely it's a great profit maker so you've made a little disc here yeah so i took that bullion and just balled it up in my hands and now i'm flattening it out you could also make a daisy and do this too mm -hmm. um 
but this is so you're just providing a base of some sort. Just a then. little more, a little more decorative base. The the ring blanks themselves are I call it a bronze color, so it's really very neutral. But this just gives it a little little pop of color on there, like that. And I just flattened it out and dresses it up and covers the edges, so you don't have to quite worry about concealing yeah, those. Yeah, exactly. Much. And then somewhere I have. Carolyn, have you got anything? Marisa? I do. I have a, one of our online students, Melinda, and this is her first time getting to join us on YouTube. Melinda, nice. welcome to Flower School. Oh, you know, I'm going to steal the camera for just a second. That makes me think of something. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, when you look at our Facebook page, you'll see me post a picture that says, Welcome to Flower School. And I don't think I've done Welcome to Flower School Melinda yet. That doesn't sound real familiar. And I know you're a new one, so I don't think I've done it yet. But I did Welcome to Flower School Colleen, Welcome to Flower School Laura. And actually, we had like three Lauras in a row. It was kind of funny. But that truly is me saying Welcome to Flower School because it's my chance to greet you. And it says Fall Design Institute, but that one is me. But I want to do a shout out to one of our tribe, Jim Doyle, he is amazing. I swear, the minute I post it, he is right on there saying, congratulations, Laura. Oh, how exciting, Mary. And, mm -hmm. Oh, you are so lucky. And I just thought, what a wonderful cheerleader person. And so a shout out to Jim. He's usually with us live. Today he's not because he's leading a bike ride. Oh my goodness. For beginners, which I thought was kind of interesting. But I would invite each of you Whenever you can, pop over to the Fall Design Institute Facebook page and greet the new students because it really makes them feel good. So when I get Welcome to Flower School Melinda on there, hopefully a whole bunch of you will pop in and say, yes, welcome, Melinda. Carolyn. Yeah, I have a great idea from Jules. She says, set up a pre-prom party and help the girls personalize her, their corsages and place their orders early. Oh, I like that a lot. Cash in hand. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's so wonderful. Yeah. And the girls get to pick exactly what they want. How cool. Marisa. And a, excuse me, and in addition to first timers on Facebook, we have Irma and Carrie. And then also I see some tulips out there. I see Gayla and Harmony, Wendy, Therese, Wayne, Jennifer, Lori, Terry, Beatrice, Ewa, Heather, Jacqueline, and Renee. However, a lot of these, I actually didn't see their tulips. I just recognized their names. Oh, come Get on. Your Get your yeah. tulips up there. Come on. So now Car uh, Carolyn's got a question, but I'm going to say, Michelle, tell us what you're doing, and then we're going to come back to her because sure. I know she's got something. So I, I put some of the Oasis floral adhesive, the cold glue, on the back of the Gerbera. I cut the stem off very flush so you can see it sitting up like a little table, all perky and happy, and then um, pushed it gently. I don't want to squish it because I don't want to break apart the center part of the flower, but pushed on it a little bit. That'll force the glue down into that bullion wire and really bite into it and make it secure. And then to let it dry, I'm just going to turn it upside down and let gravity do the work. Um, it'll take a little bit of time to, to makes, harden off. Makes me think of the garden in Wizard of Oz or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with all the little flowers there out there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so he's just hanging out upside down there. Yep. Perfect. If you could hand me some of the uh, aluminum wire up there. The silver would be awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Carolyn, what was it you had? Somebody oh, was after you. I just wanted you. to give a shout out to Nora, who's one of our newer online students and Flower Lovers Club members. Excellent. Nora, cool. welcome. Glad you're here. You know, this is your chance each week to collaborate with your tribe. Make sure you let everybody know where you're from because that way you can find out if you have a neighbor that's part of the tribe that maybe you can get together with in the virtual world as well as the real world so that you've got both. So what are you doing with the aluminum wire here? So I want to show the ring two ways. This is, this is a great option if you have them in stock or you'll get them ordered, but if you run out of them, then what are you going to do? So I, Leanne handed me the um, aluminum wire, the 12 gauge aluminum wire, and I just took a Sharpie. I actually like more like a highlighter. It's a little fatter, but okay, my fingers are fatter. A Sharpie is a little small, but it's a small girl. Let's go there. Uh, so I just coiled it around a couple times just to give me a nice smooth coil instead of just doing it with my hands. And then I'll cut that off of the main portion. Like so. And then using my jeweler's pliers, the kind that I have have um, 
the barrels are around all the way down on both pieces and then I'll just put a little curl on the end of each of these because they are they are nasty nasty cuts if you yeah, you don't want that to poke or prick or jab scratch. yourself yeah. right that's the last thing you need is a girl in a beautiful dress bleeding not a good thing I love the way that your tools match your nails and uh, match our tulips <laughs> you're fully color coordinated Brand consistency. I love it. I guess, you know what, girls? We're going to leave Michelle here. Why don't we all go get our nails done so that we could be beautiful and red? That's what I'm doing tonight. Wow! <laughs> Carolyn's the, the winner. Yes. Well, in addition to accessorizing, um, <laughs> Christina says, Leanne, she loves your necklace. My bling out for prom. Thank you. Uh, and actually, uh, Arthur wants to know if the... Uh, rings that you're using if they're one size fits all? Excellent question. Yes, they are. They are um, open at the bottom. You probably can't see that very well, but they're, um, they overlap so that you can expand them out for a, a larger finger if you want to wear it on a middle finger instead of a ring finger or a pinky um, or your thumb even. They'll, the, the metal is very forgiving. It will open up easily. And I've opened and closed them several times because I have some that I use over and over mm -hmm. and I can, I'll switch fingers what, depending on what I've made, and I haven't broken them, broken them yet, which oh, is nice. Breaking, that's, that's a good breaking. word. <laughs> um, I have not broken them yet, and that makes me very happy. So what I did with the rest of that wire, I took that long tail that I cut off and just coiled it into a spiral and then bent it back over the top. So in essence, I made exactly what we had here, but just out of the aluminum wire. So if I was trying to be super color coordinated, I could use different colored wire. Beautiful. Yeah. And there a you size go. to fit me. I exactly. think this one's gonna go home with me. Tonight. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> so um, I took a craspedia, a billy ball, and cut his stem off and put a little bit of the Oasis floral adhesive on the bottom. And it's been sitting getting nice and tacky. Oh, stay. stay. <laughs> And then just for a little bit of fun, I grabbed some preserved reindeer moss. So it is dyed and it is uh, treated with glycerin, I believe. So it's very uh, much like a natural sponge. You can squeeze it and it does, it does dry out, but it takes quite a while before it does. So it gives you a soft, cushiony position yeah. as opposed to crunchy. To crunchy. So I just grabbed a few pieces and what I thought I would do is just squirt a tiny, tiny, not even a squirt, maybe a schmear, just a schmear on the top of that ring base. And then just a little bit of that moss, much like I did with the bullion here to give it a base, something else it can bite into. And that's got such a strong texture, it'll hold securely. Absolutely. And then I can just nestle that little crest Oh, here. that's so cute. Right all by down himself. on top, all by his little lonesome on there. Ah. And the cool thing about this one, I have one that I did similar to this on a ring base uh, with the white reindeer moss. I can wear it all the time because the craspedia dries beautifully, the moss stays fresh. It's kind of like, oh, I don't wear I don't wear yellow or green ever, but I will wear yellow flowers. Right. So, and that is a duck ring. I can't believe I just did that. I know. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. I was like, she's a beaver, a not card. a duck. <laughs> Okay, Marisa, what you got there? Okay, uh, Georgine wants to know, when matching a ring and a wrist corsage, would they be worn on the same hand or wrist, or will, it, or, excuse me, or will it look more balanced worn on opposite sides? You know, I think that's going to be personal preference. Um, me, personally, I would split them up because then no matter what you're doing, you have flowers on some, some part of your hand or your arm. Um, and I think it would depend on the size of them. If you had a big statement ring, which the Gerbera really becomes because it just sits up and takes up your whole hand. I mean, you can't see half my hand with that thing on there. Um, I probably would not try and compete with that. I think I would put it on the other wrist. Mm -hmm. And isn't it uh, left wrist traditionally for your... I think it depends if you're right or left handed. handed. Yep, I, I've always worn it on my left because I'm right-handed. I'm forever bunking Same things. Same here. Yeah. yeah, I ditched the watch for one time and call it good. Um, so those are just two different ways to do a ring. One is very uh, fast, down and dirty. This one takes a little bit more 
but it's also a little more creative, right. um, a little more technique involved with that. And may use supplies that you already have on hand with the aluminum wire. Correct. So that that mm -hmm. works out well. Yep. Uh, so you and I were chatting before we started live stream talking about um, you, you, can't, you can't sell it if you don't show it. True. The merchandise, my background is in marketing. So as soon as I make something, I think, how am I going to show this? How am I going to convince somebody that they need this in their life? That's so true. You yeah. have to. Yeah. So Carolyn, what have you got there? I have a great question from Melinda. How would you take the flower off to reuse the base? Oh, good question, Melinda. Easy peasy. With that Oasis floral adhesive, when it's dry, it is very elasticy, And when you're done, you can just pull it off and it will it will peel off um you have to pull hard. you have to pull hard it's not just a quick tug you're gonna pick at it uh but that is uh, a great thing if you're showing these um in a promotional sense if you have some pre-made up maybe with silks in the shop and you need the ring base you could pull that off and like leanne said she reuses hers all the time as do i i have six or seven brand new ones but i just pick the glue up the old ones and use exactly yeah. Yeah. so i suppose you could hire me to stand in your store and be a hand model but absolutely what, are, what other options do you have for us yeah so <laughs> leanne said i must have brought my whole jewelry collection with me today so i want to show you guys a couple different pieces that can really up your game when you're going to reach out to that market for promsters. Uh, this is a ring holder. So if you've ever been at a craft show or a jewelry store, this is the kind of item that they have their rings displayed on. And it is not expensive. You can get them at the craft stores that start with M or the craft stores that start with H or the craft stores that start with J. Amazon carries them. Um, the nice thing is it presents your pieces as jewelry. And it makes it look so expensive and sophisticated mm -hmm. and fabulous. And like I said, those girls really want to feel glamorous and put together. And this makes it more less of my prom flowers and more of a, of a jewelry purchase. Mm -hmm. Think Think Tiffany's not Target. You know, it's not hanging on a plastic spin rack. It's displayed, beautifully lighted. If you have a, a front window, set up a little breakfast at Tiffany's look or something like that and display the Or pieces. host that prom party. Or host that prom party. Yeah, that was a great... I don't, forgot who said that, Carolyn, but that was an awesome idea. Jewels. Jewels. Excellent. Of course, jewels. Jewels is having jewels a prom party. Jewels is having a prom party. Oh, party. That's you awesome. would think we staged these comments. Okay, yeah. thanks, Jewels, for coming up with that. Yeah. Send her the dollar now. <laughs> I love it. So while you're getting ready for your next one, Marisa, Carolyn, is there anything we should be knowing about what's going on out there? Well, Greg had a great question. Could you use the bullion base to... Uh, would it work for a hair comb or a barrette? It would, absolutely. Yes, you could easily make that bullion base either as the, um, the flattened wad. I don't have a fancy name for that. <laughs> Uh, or you could do the, the daisy style, um, which I think I've done on a few, I think I've done it on a live before, but you could use a piece of cardboard or your hands and just wind, uh, wind that bully, oh, not that tight, Michelle. <laughs> Gotta get it off my fingers, I get a little excited. Uh, wind it around on your fingers and then slide that off. Ooh, Andrea has a good uh, name for a flower bar. She's calling it the bling bar. Yes. Bling um, bar is good. Yeah, bling bars are super popular. Um, and in a shop environment, uh, you can just literally set it up, price the items individually. Um, the most successful one I've seen, they place all their little rhinestones or feather picks or jewels or little tchotchkes that you can add in. They put them in shop glasses and each one is priced individually. When you come in to um, order your flowers, you get a, a little corsage box, uh -huh. and you can go along and pick out the, the base for your, your wrist if you're wearing a wrist corsage. Then you can pick your ribbon color. They just write a number down on it, and then they can pick all the feathers and jewels and oh, things that they it. want, put it in the, in the corsage box. You take it to the, to the clerk, it gets rung up, it's labeled with your date of prom, what school you're going to, all that good stuff. You pay for it, critical. And uh, then it's all put together. So when it's time to create that base, you just go grab it. You just box. go grab it, pull the ribbon number, and boom, you're done. 
Oh, I love that idea. That's excellent. You know, if you were a train buff, you could do like a sushi go round, but it'd be a flower go round. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I love that. Okay, there's a tie in thing. Work with a local sushi go round restaurant and have your bling go by, and the That's promers awesome. can sit there and pick. Oh, I will sign up for that. I will, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm totally digging that. I love sushi, so that works really well. So I took an extra little piece of that bouillon and bound it in the middle. So I have kind of a kind of a bow tie look there. And then I can fan out those loops that I created and that'll make more of a daisy, um, daisy shape. It's a little more structured. It's a little more, I guess you could say polished, uh, but not really. I don't necessarily think it is that much more polished. It's just a different look. And then that gives you a little area, which is kind of nice. Yeah. yeah, there, that might be easier. Yeah, that works. That shows well, I think. But that is an excellent base. You can make them larger in size. You can make them thicker, denser by just making more wraps around. Um, you could do multiple colors. You could do multiple we colors. Could go neon. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And this is this is a great ring base. This is great, like you were asking about a barrette or a hair comb to you put a little definitely bling in there. there. Um, I've done the earrings out of these, the, the orchid drop earrings out of these. I've done bases for the necklaces out of these. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so they really, they're very versatile. Excellent. So questions? Anything else? Uh, well, yes, I do. I was looking up to see, I think this is actually Shaban from a, re a recent graduate of ours, but I was just double checking, but I didn't have time, but I think it's her. Uh -huh. Whereas also we had this question um, that came to me today through um, the email. Um, so we are getting uh, questions about pricing. However, how would you price something like this? And in addition to that, the question that I have was she made a flower crown and it cost $30. And she said, is that usually like the going price? It just seemed kind of high. It cost her $30. No, it was to, retail. It was retail yeah. at 30. Um, Seems low to me, It actually me, seems actually. pretty inexpensive. So yeah. it depends. I, I guess I would say it would depend on what you had in it, the volume of materials. Uh, is it just baby's breath? Is it foliage and, and you know, just filler flowers? Or wax standard garden roses all the way right, around. Right, <laughs> right. So um, what's your take on, on markup on something like that? You know, you've got to be really careful because what you're selling is your artistic skills and your time you're not really selling the product because as you can see, the product is maybe 50 cents to a dollar. Right. There's very little product in there, but the time and your expertise is very important. So I would say evaluate how long it takes you to make it first and then determine what is your time worth? Mm -hmm. Are you worth $50 an hour? Because really, by the time you process the flowers, buy them, clean up after everything, if you charge $50 an hour for your work time, it's going to be equal much less than that. But think about how long it takes you and evaluate your time, and then evaluate the, artist, evaluate the artistic aspect of it, and then price accordingly. Uh, I've been looking around, and I'm seeing pricing ranging from $10 to $100, so that's a huge range. But it also is a huge range of the types of things that are being done. So key is to really count and think about it. Count what you use and then count your time mm -hmm. and then evaluate what you need to be paid to be paid what you are worth. So that's kind of an abstract answer, mm -hmm. but there's not an absolute great answer. We do have in the Flower Lovers Club three different pricing formulas. You can check that out. And in your classes, we teach you different pricing formulas as well. So um, all of those things would relate. And in our weddings, we also teach pricing. So everything's in there, but a lot of it just comes down to what did you use and how long did it take you and how skilled do you need to be? And those three things affect the final price. Mm -hmm. Yep. So while Leanne was giving us a math lesson, um, <laughs> I took some of the Oasis flat wire. This is the one inch wide wire and cut it to a size appropriate for a rep my wrist. So it's longer. And then this is just your standard double face satin. You know, we mm -hmm. were talking about colors, color of the year. It is that classic blue is classic is having blue. impact on yep. things. And uh, blue flowers are hard to come by. And 
in those pastels that I was seeing were pale, pale blues. Some shifted over to the turquoise side, to the aqua side. There aren't flowers in those colors. So we don't really want to match anyhow. We want to coordinate and complement with the flowers. Using your color wheel Using your to color, wheel. color palette. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so what I grabbed was some uh, just double-sided ribbon, uh, double-sided satin ribbon actually in turquoise which is not a flower color and cut it just about the same length as the other then i'm going to use um, u glue dashes and attach it that's going to bring in that dress color maybe or the accent color in her dress if it's multicolored. Mm -hmm. uh, your necklace has a beautiful um, turquoise stone in it so if she wanted if leanne wanted to pull that color out a little bit more i can't give you flowers in this color but I can give another accent with the ribbon and you could do the exact same thing for wedding. Um, True. As professionals, we have to be able to adapt to these colors mm -hmm. and address how do I incorporate it and ribbon is up back in style and on trend again. And yes. so that really gives us a great option. And the really nice thing, this is five eighths wide ribbon. It is just a little bit wider than a U glue dash. Yeah, isn't that convenient? How convenient I wonder that if was. they planned it that way. I don't way. know, but I like it. <laughs> it works for me. And this is also a great technique for weddings. We're talking prom right at the moment, but um, when I work with my brides for weddings, I always tell them if your bridesmaids are having their dresses altered, if they're being shortened, if there are sleeves but they're taking sleeves off, if the bride's dress is being altered, be sure to ask for the fabric. Then you've got the snippets then to you use. Have, then you have the snippets. It's an exact color match. Um, there's a, a dress manufacturer that has retail stores that comes up with colors that do not exist anywhere else and it is a nightmare to match so i always say be sure to buy an extra sash or a ribbon trim from them if you're not altering the dresses then we can match it exactly good 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 suggestion so now i'm just taking that ribbon with the glue dash attaching it on one side and rolling it across and attaching it on the other of course it would have been good if i had centered it and i did not but it's close. It's close. close you know, one tip one. that I heard one time that I thought was brilliant in trying to match girls' dresses, because you don't really want them bringing the dress into you. You don't need that. That's no. like, no, 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 no. It's not a fashion show. And a photograph doesn't truly give you the proper color, because every photo is a little different depending on the light. But I had a graduate who would have the, the brides and promers and whoever was trying to coordinate to bring in a paint chip from a paint store that was the exact color because you can always get exactly what you need in those paint chips. And then she would have them, it was a woman, she would have them initial the paint chip so that they were acknowledging this was the color so that there was no discrepancy later as to what is fuchsia or what is aqua. And then she would staple that directly to the order. And I thought, how brilliant is that? I love because it that. holds them responsible mm -hmm. for communicating that color. Yes. And I thought that was great. That's, I love it because, for example, this color I see, to me, my eye reads more aqua, even though they called it turquoise. I don't care if the person calls this purple, just as long as we agree on that's it the can color be it's supposed color to be. They, want. they yeah. can call it sky blue, yeah, yeah. whatever. Marisa, what you have? Okay, so Sharon wants to know why you used um, the glue dash for that over Oasis glue. Good question. So the reason I use the glue dash instead of the Oasis glue is the Oasis will um, bleed through, the glue will bleed through that ribbon a little bit. And I didn't want, um, I didn't want to have to deal with that. It takes longer to dry. It has to cure a little bit. Um, this is just faster in that mm -hmm. sense. So uh, what I did then was just curled those ends. I used bail making pliers. So these are different than your jeweler's pliers. The, um, the shaft on the ends is completely round, uh, the same width the whole way down. And there are two different sizes of, um, of teeth or mm -hmm. however you want to describe that part there. Uh, so you can change the size of the, the curl. So you can get it very making. tight or you can go a little bit looser. Yep, yeah. and these come in three different three different sizes. Mm -hmm. I think this is the medium, right. medium group. 
So this is just one way to give uh, a little extra color that maybe doesn't come in flowers. When I like the way that you wrapped around the end so that you've covered up the loose ends and also covered up where the end of the ribbon is. Yep, so because that that's satin will fray, which yeah. unfortunately we can't get around too much there. Um, I think I'll just add some flowers to this one. Let's see what flowers you're going to do. Let's see. Yes. Um, so well, I, I picked this color specifically. So I have a half of a glue strip here and I'm going to just place that down right on top of my fingernail, <laughs> right on top of my cuff. And that'll hold that ribbon in place and also give me a tacky surface that I can um, put the flowers on. Um, picked that color because it doesn't come in nature. We don't get flowers in that color. But as I was doing some research on the prom colors and the trends, I kind of went down a rabbit hole about that whole age group and ended up you know, looking at buying trends and, and um, expenditure levels for this age group. This is a wealthier teen age group than we have ever seen. They have more disposable income mm -hmm. and, and um, that just gives us lots of opportunities to, like you were talking about, upsell something or... Well, and I think they're more prone to buy flowers because they've been exposed to flowers. Mm -hmm. But is it Katy Perry's new song that she comes out just in covered totally with flowers? Yeah. And this is what they're seeing. Mm -hmm. And then you see, um, oh my gosh, who was it? One of the Kardashians just had an entire house filled with sunflowers. And then there was Lady Gaga with her helmet of flowers. Of flowers. Mm -hmm. And so I think they're more prone to think, oh, I have to have flowers. And seeing that it's a vital expenditure as opposed to a luxury. Exactly, exactly. Uh, the other thing I thought was really interesting is a lot of us in the floral industry that have been here for a while, we saw the tinted, tipped carnations of the 70s oh, yeah. and said, please don't ever do that to us again. Well, everything old is new again. But the difference is, instead of it being a tipped carnation, uh, it's the dyed roses, the, the rainbow roses or the dipped roses or the orchids that are And it's colored. getting very bold. Yes. No subtlety No, it's anymore. hitch upside the head. Yeah. This age group has no problem with dyed flowers. They don't care that they've been changed from mother they nature. They just want their color. They just want their color. So if you've got someone who's maybe wearing a butter yellow dress, a soft yellow or something like that, of course we can do yellow ranunculus to coordinate with the dress. We can do yellow craspedia because those are super fun. But you can also paint craspedia. It will take paint beautifully. And it holds and holds and it holds. holds. So now I have created something that's Ooh. in that similar color tone. This is a little more, whoops, a <laughs> little more um, yellow undertone to mm -hmm. it, but it's a nice bridge between the yellow flowers. It ties it together so and it's well. Fun. Yeah. The prom should be fun. It should be, you know, relaxed and happy. So with these, what I want to do is snip off their stems completely. Easier said than done. Any questions, Marisa? Um, well, I was going to tr try and hold this off for a while, but just in case you don't get to it, <laughs> um, we have a couple people asking about silk flowers and if you could use them for something like this. Wow. That is, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> T Good questions. Thank you guys. Uh, so remind me on that in just a second. I'll get this one started. And I was holding on to it. Okay, <laughs> good. So I have a couple of the, the painted Crespedia and three of the yellow spray roses. And I will use the Oasis adhesive on this. I, I want that extra. It's sturdier and stronger for a heavier bloom Whoop. and it just works so well. Yeah. yeah, so we did have a question about that. If um, if the glue strip is stronger than the cold glue? I wouldn't say that it's stronger than the cold glue. I would say that it has different applications than the cold glue. Um, it, I find it more difficult to remove from things. Mm -hmm. the, the liquid adhesive, once it's dry and it's kind of rubber cementy, um, I can peel that off. The, the glue strips or the glue dashes, I find much more challenging yeah so if you're trying to save or reuse whatever you've put uh come back here whatever you've put that glue strip on eh, yeah. maybe it not. is interesting the um 
advanced class where we teach a whole segment just on glues. Mm -hmm. There are so many different types of glues and each one is wonderful to do what it's meant to do. Yep. But if you use the wrong glue for the wrong thing, then all of a sudden you've got issues. So that's why we added that all in to the advanced class because we're all gluing so much more. Mm -hmm. And then is it, do you use the dashes or do you use the cold glue or do you use spray glue or do you use Lomi glue? I mean, there's so many different things. And each one has its purpose. You don't use yeah. Lomi to do flowers. You don't use hot glue to do gluing plastic items together or flowers. Yeah, you know, bad. bad. That's right. So Marisa had the question about could you use um, permanent botanicals or silks? Yes, you absolutely can. I How do you really feel about yeah. that? Well, <laughs> and, and I have a very limited range on those that I typically use. I like cherry blossoms because mm -hmm. they the structure of the blossom is beautiful, but in real life they're not going to hold together. Right. Um, Dusty Miller, Hydrangea, Delphinium. Two of those are blue, which is hard with blue flowers. And uh, I grabbed some delphinium. This is silk, people. This is a fake one. So you jumped that question in there on yes. her and she was ready for you. See how prepared teacher Michelle is? This is why we love her, because she's always ahead of the game. She knew you were gonna ask that question. So come up with a question that maybe she's not prepared for. You know, let's, let's, talk, let's give stump her Stump the a, teacher? Yeah, stump the teacher. <laughs> and then this is a, a, a silk Dusty Miller. Um, the kicker on, on the Dusty Miller and the hydrangea, which I forgot to bring one in today, is to make sure you buy a really high quality one. You don't, don't get it at the store where everything's a dollar. Spend, uh, spend the money. Um, I think the hydrangea that I work with, it's blue and you get a lot of cuts off of it. Um, it was $20 for the one stem. But it's spectacular. It's and each florette actually looks like perfect. a hydrangea. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So the beauty of this is if I need to do um, boutonnieres in the summer for a wedding, hmm, Dusty Miller and just, it just it's not going to hold. It's up not well. going to hold. No, it's hot. It's on a hot human that's probably wearing a black tux in the sun. Uh, it, it just wilts instantly. But this gives you a lot of flexibility to do that. And then the same with the, um, the delphinium. You can just pop the individual florets off mm -hmm. and mix it with fresh foliages, mix it with ribbons, mix it with bling. And afterwards, it is kind of a keepsake, especially if you've done uh, for prom. It's, right, that it's way they can last. save them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, so that was an awesome question. Carolyn, you've got something over there. Uh, yeah, Rose was wondering, um, did you use Design Master to paint the Crispidia? I did. Yes, I did. And I used, I just happen to have it, <laughs> I used the Ice Blue, which is a little, I should have gone a shade darker because I wasn't accounting for the yellow bleed through. So go just a shade darker than you think you want. And they have a turquoise as mm -hmm. well that yeah. would work. Um, use the Design Master paint the color tool, not the just for flowers. Just for flowers is a dye, so it's translucent and you won't get, you won't hide the yellow that's underneath. You'll be mixing the ice blue with the yellow mm -hmm. and you'll end up with green. It's going to be an interesting time as we all do more painting and dyeing and such to experiment with the different colors and what each color does. And then sometimes you might use three different colors sprayed in different layers to get the perfect hue that you want. Um, and it's kind of an exploration of the color wheel. If you've got a yellow base and you're putting blue over the top, if it's translucent, you're gonna end up with green. If it's opaque, you're gonna end up with that yellow based blue. And the more layers you do, the more blue it's going to get. So you can really adjust based on what you want. And if you want to hide the yellow totally, one tip that I have found is always pre-spray with silver. Mm -hmm. And then it just seems to coat so well, even more so than white. Put the silver first and then whatever other color over the top and it's a little stronger. A little primer coat. Basically. Primer coat, mm -hmm. yes, definitely. Yeah. Oh, that looks so good. So I added those two um, painted Crespedia in. And again, I love, I just love this preserved uh, glycerin reindeer moss. I have some white and I can use it instead of foliage. I'm going foliage free on this one. Um, just to tuck in, just put a little dab of that Oasis adhesive on there. Oops, I let that top dry out a little bit. So next week when we do the advanced class, we'll be 
doing different flowers to wear and every student will actually get to do it so you can touch this feel it explore your belly ball's going to fall out oh, Sorry. he's running away <laughs> it's chipping he's yeah. not dry yet and then we'll be doing the glue discussion so you can see what the different glues are used for and all of that if you're in the online course you know that's already in there if you're not in there yet join us because it's all included way more than we can ever do in a live in a live we just sort of give you pieces and inspiration and collaboration and then in the courses, we give you education. <coughs> so I'm just using the little bits of that moss to tuck in there, fill in any gaps, just like you would use baby's breath or wax flower or some other kind of filler, seeded eucalyptus, something like that. Um, well, and with it being bleached, it brightens it up so quickly. Yes. And again, this would be perfect for someone in a yellow dress or in maybe a, a multicolored floral where you really don't want a fussy corsage or a fussy wrist wristlet you want something that's got a little bolder impact to it so that it holds its own against that right. uh, but it gives it a real almost boho chic look by the time you combine these colors and a, 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 a gypsy yeah you absolutely know, it just is grand i love that so we've got about 15 minutes left. Um, we're going to go to Carolyn and Marisa, see if they've got questions. I know you've got another thing you wanted to share with us. Sure. Um, I have to look at that one up close oh, because yes. that's just so grand. So while I show this on camera and you're getting some things, Marisa, Carolyn, anything we should know? I have two. <laughs> um, although Jeannie responded to Mary and then other people are asking, I know you all are going to love this question, but everyone's asking about if you've ever used a ranunculus for this type of work. And if you can talk about like timeline, how long they last. Sure. Um, yes, actually we have used ranunculus. I, have, I still have that yellow one sitting down here. Um, we did it just kind of as an experiment to see how they would last. Now, Results may vary, but uh, we found that we had, what, four days in the cooler? Yeah. And then took it out and left it on the counter for a couple days. And it was still quite lovely. And it still looked great. Yeah. And then it just dried. And it was almost as pretty as a dried as it was a fresh. Um, I would not make them up on Wednesday for a Saturday event. I would probably do anything that was ranunculus focused on Friday morning for a Saturday event. So the day before just and the then day before. refrigerate. Yeah, and then just keep them refrigerated. But you know, this is one of those things where they say, don't try this at home. Wrong. Try this at home. Make one at home. Wear it around the house. Go out to dinner with friends. Wear it and then leave it on the counter and watch and see. It's an investment in yourself. You're worth it. And it's an investment in your education. So yes, try this at home, people, and see what you think. And then report back into us, because we always want to know how the results may vary depending on the environment. Exactly. Yes, Marisa. Okay, and then Gail on Facebook. Okay, so uh, they are wondering how to get out of their design rut. Been trying to venture out of their comfort zone, but all of their corsages still look the same. Hmm, well try some of the stuff that we've done today. Uh, we've got some great, um, we have some great tutorials. Uh, there's, well you have, what, six or seven that are just on different cuff techniques using the aluminum wire. Mm -hmm. um, I have a tutorial that shows the noodled wire with a lot of bling, it's, it's a homecoming cuff, um, but it could easily be adjusted for wedding, just not as bold but then again if the bride wants bold then that's fine then go for it yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know one thing that we have found around here that helps with inspiration um, is have somebody else choose what you're going to work with because then it, ha it takes you out of your comfort zone so you might have one of your co-workers set out an assortment of flowers and say make something with this if you work independently and so you're a solo designer, maybe you don't have someone else that could set some things up for you, then pick a dress. So you just kind of peruse online and find a dress and then think, if I had someone come to me wanting flowers to wear with this outfit, what would I create? Then, in order to be able to explain this to your customers, make sure you get good pictures and post it on your social media. Tag prom flowers, tag wrist corsage, so that they see what you're creating. 
but by making yourself try something different then photoing it and showing it you're educating your consumer and you just take little baby steps and slowly you can change your work around but otherwise we do default because we go for the easy way out because we're in a hurry mm -hmm. we got to get the work done mm -hmm. um, but if you take some time and, and explore maybe you know pick a day that's not quite as crazy busy in your world and make an appointment with yourself to explore flowers to wear. Mm -hmm. Put it on your calendar, schedule it like any other appointment. Mm -hmm. I find if I do that, I'm more likely to do it. Otherwise I think, oh, I'll just do it at the end of the day and then it's 11 o'clock and I'm going to bed, so that's not happening. And it didn't happen. And it didn't happen. But if you no. set your alarm that at 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. I'm investing 30 minutes in myself. Yep. You deserve 30 minutes. You might have to lock the bathroom door and hide, but you deserve 30 minutes. And sometimes you might only get 27, but you're worth it. And so make an appointment and a date with yourself. Carolyn. Yeah, Marmat, going back to marketing, wears her floral jewelry, and she wears it throughout the day, but a great tip she gave while wearing it, she sees how it holds up. And then you can she can answer all those questions. How does it hold up? Hold up? Will the flowers fall off? Will mm -hmm. they come apart? Will all the questions that the customers have to ask? Absolutely. No, I think that's excellent. I think I'm going to wear this one. I'll tell you how it holds. Okay. Good. Oh, so, so David, we're going out to dinner tonight. Um, I've got my flowers. So you know, and it sort of matches my shirt. Notice. So um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'll report in tomorrow as to how this holds. Leanne, can you actually take that off and do that again and show them how it bends over your wrist like that? Certainly. So this one is adjustable, and that's what I love about using the flat wire for cuffs. And Michelle cut it so that it would fit any wrist. I have fairly small wrists, so when I put it on, it was just kind of la 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 la. So what I did is just grab, I don't know what's the best way to show it. I think probably there. I just grabbed and squished it down around myself. And now it's totally stable. It's not gonna go anywhere. And you know, if your wrist is bigger, you just pull it out a little more. This works really well for the daddy-daughter dances that they do, where you have the young women with little itty bitty wrists. You can adjust it to any size. And it works out great. And I do think that you must have planned that for my shirt. I'm well, I so impressed. I, I, I didn't, it. but you're just on trend. That's <laughs> I all. Guess I That's am. what it amounts to. Oh my to. gosh, how perfect is that? Okay, so you've made a bow. So right now, uh, I'm just using a couple different kinds of ribbon, a couple different widths. This one happens to be wired. The other is not, just for some extra texture and so forth. And then um, the pink ribbon here is is grow grain so it's the kind of ribby textured mm -hmm. um, type of ribbon you could do the same thing with the double face satin the downside to satin and you'll see in a minute is it's slippery right and it comes off uh, which isn't optimum in a lot of cases and then i'm just going to tie this off with a little bit of black michelle yes ma'am by any chance just because someone already asked mm -hmm. and i'm just assuming based off your colors there is hyacinth gonna go in there uh hi yeah. there we go oh come on ribbon uh i will have some hyacinths to go in there and i actually have a different my third hand mm -hmm. um i have some calancho oh Ooh. okay because we had someone asking if hyacinth would be a good choice hyacinth would be an awesome choice so um hyacinth in season are fabulous they have fragrance which is really really nice and they are a great substitute for stephanotis so if you're in a shop environment, you could just prune your plants. I do that with orchids all the time. It's the best way to do it because then you get exactly what you need. It's yep. the right size. Make sure those are a little bit long. So I'll just trim those off. So I just made a bow with the ribbon and that what particular ribbon here is wired so I can fluff it out. And then what I'll do is take a glue dash. You could do the same with Oasis Adhesive, but I'm gonna use a glue dash in this case and attach it to the grow grain ribbon. And I realized I got in here without any salal leaves. Ooh, Carolyn, can you see if we've got any salal in the cooler? I bet we might. I think there's some just right outside the door. I headed out and then completely, completely forgot about it. So while she's doing that, 
If you know somebody who should be seeing this, who needs maybe some inspiration to get ready for prom and weddings, tag them. Be sure to invite them, share out the video, and then if you're thinking about flower school, don't forget that yes, we're ready for you. You can re register for online or in the classroom. And this is just a small taste of what we do. So share, tag, and join us. And then don't forget the inspiration from Jim Doyle. Pop on to the Floral Design Institute Facebook page whenever you can. And when you see a greeting that says, Welcome to Flower School, add your greeting to them. Make them feel extra, extra special. That just warms my heart every time I see him do that. And I'm just like, oh, Jim, that is so grand. So I invite each of you to join us because we're better together. And if we collaborate and support, each one of us will rise to the top and be the best we possibly can be. So I invite you to join us in greeting and welcoming and take part in the tribe's collaboration each and every day. So what I did, I glue dashed that bow onto the top, so that's gonna give it a really secure attachment. It does exceptionally well with fabric, but I will use the liquid adhesive, the cold glue, to put my flowers in. So you're combining your glues so again. So I'm, I'm mixing my glues, and I want that salal leaf on the back to stop the bleed through of the glue. If you don't do that, when you look at the underside, you're gonna see where it's bled through the fabric and it just looks it's tacky. It's just wrong, it's yeah. not professional. Yeah. So can you act like you're gonna knock on a door for me? Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, so this is another alternative. Who's there? Who's there? <laughs> Flower lady. <laughs> Flower lady who? <laughs> <laughs> so this is where that uh, double face satin would be a little problematic. The grow grain kind of sticks to itself, bites on itself. Oh, that feels so secure. And it, it yeah, it bites a little bit better. And I didn't get it centered on my, my bow. But this is another option for both wedding and for prom. Obviously for prom, um, you would leave it blingy for a wedding, you might take it down a notch. But this gives you the option to just add something a little softer, a little more romantic. The cuffs are, are hard, they're metal. Um, it's Almost just a, industrial. Very industrial, and that, depending on what the dresses look like and, and the space that they're in, but something that's, uh, if the dress that the girl is wearing for prom is a little more subtle, this is a way to just add a little bit more frill. Definitely. Makes me think of a Betsy Johnson dress. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or Cindy Lauper. Girls yes. just want to have fun. Exactly, just a I fun, fluffy one. And then, um, probably won't do it, I don't know that we'll have enough time, but picked up these adorable uh, calancho. It's a plant. You can buy it as a cut flower, but again, if you're in a shop environment, you probably have these to do dish gardens. So rather than, again, buying something that you don't need, if you have something you can use, I can just come in and pluck out those open blossoms. They do beautifully in they corsages. So oh my gosh. Well. Yeah. And then work them into my, um, my arrangement, excuse me, to my corsage. Um, the other they asked about was hyacinth, which is going to give you that look that's very much like a stephanotis and... Oh, they smell so I know, good. Isn't that great? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Carolyn, would you hand me the Gerber ring? It goes with this so well. I think I need it. I'll just stand here and be... Be the hands model? Yeah. There we go. Let me put it on the middle one. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. What do you think? It's all color coordinated. Oh my gosh. And then the finishing touch, the last thing you do on all of these pieces is make sure you spray them down with some kind of anti-transpirant like crown and glory uh, that would be an option um, and in fact when i'm doing wedding uh, body flowers personal flowers or uh, prom flowers anything that's cut off its stem i will dip my flowers in a little cup of the um, oasis i have like a little like a little votive cup that's full of, the, uh, not of Oasis, my goodness, that would be horrid, of the crown and glory. <laughs> and then just dip it right in. Yeah, just dip it right in and really let it saturate, soak down into mm -hmm. the flowers, and then let that dry. Then as I arrange them, they've already been treated. This won't hurt the ribbons in most cases. Do check if it says, you know, it's not color fast. Most of the industry ribbons are. Right. If it's hand dyed, though, you could have some issues. Definitely. Right. So for a wedding, if, you, if someone's done a custom hand dyed silk 
mm -hmm. ribbon, um, then you wouldn't want to be spraying it with something. But if you dipped the flowers beforehand, be they're already treated. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So then, Michelle, we've got about two minutes. So, <laughs> Carolyn, Marisa, if you've got any last minute questions, and then while Michelle's getting her last little bits here, we'll ask her for any tips that she has to get you started on prom, you know, that just gives, gives you power. But, Carolyn, yes, anything? Greg had a great question. Will that ribbon twist around the wrist? Will the the ribbon corsage will it really shift. Will it shift? Um, not usually. That's mm -hmm. again the nice part of that grow green ribbon. It does kind of bite on itself as you tie the bow. And what I usually do is it explain to the girls, knock on a door, then you can place it, show them how to do it, and tie it, and tell them to tie it uncomfortably tight because as they wear it a little bit that bow will relax and settle in but i i've not really ever had a problem with them no spinning. it feels super secure and since your wrist isn't truly round it's more oval it's not going to spin the way it would if it was on a completely round dowel or something mm -hmm. but no i think it's going to be totally stable and the wider ribbon um, helps tremendously if you do this is a number nine width if you did a number five it's a little thin and it tends to be floppy. Right. This, the wider ribbon really keeps it from being floppy. Grand. Mm -hmm. So then Michelle, you brought in so much to share with us. You did the rings, you did the wrist, and you did the wrist. Mm -hmm. Now how do you display the wrist corsages? I know you showed us how you displayed the rings. Absolutely. So again, taking a page out of a jewelry display, um, you can buy these at those craft stores, right? These are for displaying bracelets or necklaces, long chains. And I just threw a few different things on here so you could see it. But if you're doing a bling bar, <clears throat> excuse me, or um, doing a pre-prom party, <laughs> then this is a great way to showcase the different kinds of uh, wristlets that they can work with. We saw the ring holder that does that same thing that allows you to showcase your floral jewelry just like fine jewelry. Um, I don't know that I'd put the expense into lighting it necessarily, but the contrast of the velvet, which um, is a luxe material, it has a, an expensive connotation usually associated with it. Um, it's a nice way to display it. It's a pop of color, some nice contrast with it. And then if you're doing a necklace, and this is just, this is the Oasis uh, Mega Wire that I use for a lot of my pendant bases. But displaying the necklaces on a neck frame, this one's a shaped frame, some of them are flat that are kind of like um, mm -hmm. table tents that pop out. But displaying your pieces as fine jewelry, as works of art, not just it's a corsage, it's a work of art. Well, and that helps in pricing things we go back to that pricing exactly. if you display it and market it as fine jewelry and a classic piece mm -hmm. that is worth it basically is what you're saying this is worth it i think you can charge more to the value mm -hmm. and perceptually they still think they're getting a fabulous deal because they are it's a one-of-a-kind handmade mm -hmm. piece of floral art just for their special day mm -hmm. Oh, Michelle, you have kind of outdone yourself on all of this. Again, thank you to you for joining us. Thank you for the great questions. Mm -hmm. Tag a friend, share it out. Give Michelle some love. Let her know what you thought, because I know she'll be going through and reading your comments. So if you've had a favorite piece, which technique did you think was number one in your book? Type it in there, because she'll see it then and go, oh, I'll have to do more of that. If there's something else you'd like to see in the future, and if you have thoughts, Type it in there. We all love to see. But for now, it's time for us to go have a glass of wine. Yes, we're working hard. We're, there we have flowers for everybody to wear That's today. Right. We can all go <laughs> out. But thank you for joining us. Get out there, have fun, and too much fun. You did so cool with this. I